Um, okay, so this is my strategy. Um, and I named it architectural response and guiding principles because um, in talking about my architectural response, there is a whole slew of things that I'm thinking about in the background to inform that. Um, and what I mean by that is, well, I'll first get into the architectural aspect of it. So taking on your cue last week about creating a um, research question um, from an architectural point of view, um, I really value materiality and texture. And these are the two things that I really wanna focus on. Um, and I guess like more in like the finer detail in order to um, reconcile the built versus the natural environment. So throughout Bull's head history, um, you know, we've gone through different iterations of, you know, completely getting rid of vegetation, replanting it. And um, it, I guess that kind of shows like our struggle with our natural identity and, and living in harmony with um, our surroundings. So um, in that spirit, I thought it would be a good idea to, um, midi to um, amalgamate the two so that the built is the natural, like we're building from the natural. I hope that makes sense. Yeah. Um, yep. Yep. <laughs> yeah, so, um, and the, the wider guiding principles, um, as you already know, um, permaculture design, um, I'll be doing a lot more research into the specific placement of, um, you know, different groups of vegetation, the circulation, how the, um, I guess, the logical functioning of the site as a whole and how to optimize it, because mm -hmm. I think that's the, that's the perspective that I really want to um, come down to more from a, like a logical kind of um, mm -hmm. functionality standpoint. I think it's really important um, because this place is supposed to act as a hub. Um, it's a very busy place with um, a lot of work going on, a lot of um, research and, and public education. It really needs to work for the people instead of the people working around the architecture. Um, and yeah, and, and um, the title of my project is actually called um, Spirit of Place. Um, and I guess that really sums up my attitude towards this. Um, in addition to all the points that I've mentioned just now, um, I just really want to take a cue from the original people from this land and how they used this um, peninsula as well, because it was a working, functioning um, place of living for them as well. So, so just taking cues from them um, to inform uh, the, the best use of the land. Great. Um, definitely building on what you're, you've researched, so that's good to know. Um, material, uh, yeah, that looked really exciting. You showed us a quick flash. Keep it going. <laughs> yeah, um, so moving on to my material study. So this is like getting into the nitty gritty of like what kind of uh, textures can I come up with? What kind of materials can I use? And um, I guess I forgot, I forgot to mention as well, it was really important for me um, in this site to only use natural materials um, that is easily, um, you know, found and could be erected, you know, with, without like all the carbon emissions and, and all that kind of stuff. So, yeah. um, so materials yeah, so, that might be actually on the site already, you mean? Yeah, or or or, or, or the surrounds. Yeah. So I guess I'll like yeah. spoil it right now. Um, the the yeah. two materials that I'm working with um, for the past week and I foresee for the future would be clay and cob, which I'll explain yeah. in a bit. I'm, I'm sure you know what it is already. Um, uh, this, this is called um, Mokum Gain, and it's a technique where um, I basically stack different layers of um, different colored clay. And then once I basically sandwich them and press in different patterns, as you can see here, mm. um, form into this kind of block. The cool thing is um, once I take a piece of string and like slice into it, kind of like bread, each layer is different mm. and it reveals a different kind of pattern um, and infusion of the different colors, which I thought was really beautiful. And this, um, I think, could work really well as, um, you know, some of the feature um, focal points of, of the site. So there's some potential. And, here. and so this is at this point still just a material test and not imagining anything literal here of, of a form yeah. or anything. Um, but yeah. I, I think a really interesting thing for me is taking this thing, this block, I guess, which pretty mundane from the outside in this slicing you get complete different stories at each yeah. slice um you know it's a complete different pattern it's not nece it's necessarily continuous in any way um yeah really nice yeah um and yeah and just 
I was going to say that in terms of colours, yes, they're very natural colours, but don't forget um, Honey Margaret talking about, you know, they're the baseline colours, but there's, there's much more. Um, that we, yeah, 72 colours. Yeah. Hmm. yeah. Yeah. Yeah, um, keep going. Yeah, I'll keep that um, down. So um, we're just um, working with clay so much in the past week. Um, what I noticed about the... Um, like how to actually work with the best is to really know um, at what level of dryness is best for each technique. Like for example, <laughs> for the last technique, it works best when the clay is quite um, fresh, like quite damp. So it's very pliable, very malleable. But for this kind of thing, for um, printmaking and different kind of, uh, making different kind of textures on the surface, um, I found that it works better once the clay has, the clay has dried out a little bit more, but not completely dry. So that it really takes to, um, the you know the different imprints and the in the patterns that I want to put on the surface. Um, yeah, and yet, um, really nice subtle technique to pick up on, and it'll be interesting to see those subtleties yeah. of material come through um, in the design as well. Is that a little knocky rolling board down the bottom left? Um, yeah. <laughs> so um, this is on my <laughs> PDF. If you click on play, it'll take you to um, the the video, and you can um, right. watch. How that, yeah, uh, yeah, how yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So um, this is uh, like my like, I guess, like big experimental uh, project with my um, materials. This is this is called cob and it's mm -hmm. a natural building material that I did some research into. And I think it's really great because it basically for me and my understanding of it, it for, for my project, it can basically replace the function of cement or um any mm. kind of like big, big structural um mm. yeah material and the positive is that it is super sculptural um and i just love like how i could like work with my hands with it and mm. yeah it's like really get into the making of the building and as a side note i think it's a great activity for the community to come together and actually build mm. this together as well but i um, was going to say uh, you know you often see cob buildings it, there's a lot of labor in in the making of the yeah. material itself so it, it feels like something that you actually you know yeah. like we've talked about community engagement maybe the community themselves can, yeah. can build this project um you're right cob really does sort of lend itself for a lot of things that concrete can and it's through these bindings of you know the straw acting as the aggregate i guess holding yeah um would otherwise be quite loose and brittle together good um yeah. and uh, good to see again the the idea of making by hand good mm. uh, a mess i guess is the other thing to keep in mind are you embracing the mess of of the material to Oh, is that a question? Um, right. oh, I, I don't know. Just a, a, a thought to keep in mind is, yeah. is that, you know, you've talked about texture and, and things. Is yeah. is that mess of the texture also something that's integral to it rather than trying to control it all in any way? Yeah, mm -hmm. Right. Um, how's that all come together? Uh, it, it's still the same radical model as last week. Am I correct? Yes. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, yeah so, Oh, sorry. There's still one more before we come to oh, yeah. the video. Yeah, so I'll just go through really, this really quickly. Um, again, based on the idea of ethno-architecture, um, traditional um, Aboriginal architecture consists of domes, and I want to respect that and include that with um, this project. And I also personally really like circular, or not exactly circular, but like curvature, because I think um, it just maximizes the um, circulation and the view mm. better. Mm. That's my personal opinion. Um, and just yeah. in terms of technique, um, this clay is casted into um, the mold. And then I call this the uh, subtractive technique, which is where, so I put on a layer of the clay and then I go back in and then um, take out, so subtract um, the um, openings. And that's the way that I've uh, basically created that piece. And, um, mm. and other techniques include um, this one here, which is where I rolled up the clay into like a, a really long snake. And then I started like coiling it around um, to form a dome. So yeah, so I'm just playing around with different ways that I can form these shapes using that material. Great. Yeah, so um, in terms of my concept sketch for the radical model, um, 
Yeah, so I think when I was first thinking about what I could do, um, immediately I'm like, okay, so on top of the platform, it's completely bare concrete. And for my direction for this project, I want to cover it with um, vegetation immediately. Um, and also these different uh, enclosures on top, which um, explores exposure and enclosure and in turn also light and shadow. So I think that's like, I hope that um, I've uh, depicted that well in this in this um, ideation sketch. Um, yeah, no, that definitely makes sense. And it makes sense for everything you've said so far too. Yeah, yeah I did. So, yeah. Um, Yeah. yeah. Um, take um, us to the actual model rather than the drawing of it. Cool. Um, yeah. So moving on to our actual, my actual model. Um, this is what mm -hmm. it looks like. Um, so yeah, it, it shows those ideas of texture, of light and shadow, um, enclosure, and exposure. Um, and I think with my own personal comments with how this came together, um, with how experimental it was, I'm quite happy with the different. Um, quality of uh, space that that is generated by this model, and I think there's a lot of potential. Mm. Um, I'll, I'll I'll talk about circulation in the next slide, but yeah, as as you can see, um, I've added like little people in there just so you know give you give yeah you kind get of a good idea. sense of scale. And again, sort of um, just um, clarifying in terms of anything literal here is this imagining half is it carved away under the coal loader and those bits are added on top. Is that the intent there? So I've just got to close my blind. I'm still here. Um, did, did, were you asking if this would be set into the platform? Is that what you meant? Yeah, is, so the, on that top one, top left one, the one, the person dancing, um, yeah. is that the current level of the coal loader in your mind? Um, see, these are the details that I think I'll have to iron out moving forward. Yeah. Um, no, that's fine. I just wanted to know if you were thinking that literally yet or yeah. still just well, an idea. That's fine. Yeah, well, to answer your question, I intended the um, cob as the base. So yeah. where that sits. Well, I was going to say material-wise, it, it feels like particularly when you're talking about um, um, using materials on site, it almost feels like one um one should be that that existing landscape i guess and then the other yeah. is the those materials added yeah uh, yeah um and but you're right the the different various forms of exposure and um enclosure similar to what we just talked about with charlotte um really identifying i guess where on site it does make sense yeah. to have those prospect moments where it um makes sense to be purely re refuge um, your title of spirit of place. I'm assuming you might be aware of Glamurka then, um, but he talks all about prospect and refuge and it feels quite um, important here. So to understand um, where it makes sense. And then I guess building on your sort of other research of the water and the sunlight and, um, and things like that, it feels like, again, understanding those patterns is the, is the first story to to understanding where it makes sense to have these um obviously really rich experiential spaces right um that's the way forward to me um makes sense um but yeah. you said there was something about circulation as well just quickly yeah um yeah so as you can see um this is like hollowed out the top layer um mm -hmm. yeah so so you know there's just this um inter that's the benefit of the 360 degree shape so that um, it feels like, you know, people could mingle in like the hive, you know, amongst the hive yeah. instead of like, ooh, turning corner. But um, yeah, and, and just the last thing is um, this thing that I tried to make to um, resemble a landmark feature that I think might be an option. Um, and it's supposed to be um, the way to symbolize the whale dreaming of like how the whale ancestral creators were like dancing from the sky world to the physical world. I thought that it's like a nice, um, homage to, to pay uh, mm. you know, to the um, original custodians. Um, and yeah, so I think like those are all the ideas in my- um, Great. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah. That's just further yeah, explaining. The last it? one, it's just, a, it's just the mood board. It's just um, like yeah. really- Potential really going forward. 
Yeah. Um, ah, okay. So that does show a bit more idea of scale. I think at this point, you know, it's good that you've imagined that down there, the that photo montage of it on the site. But I, I think um, before you get to that point, make sure you've got that real because I'm, yeah. you've got that understanding of water and patterns. I think yeah. that's the 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 first step to really imagine or figure out and let the tuck site tell you um, how these things are placed um, on it. But going back to the previous slide, sorry. Um, I like the, as you said, various forms of enclosure um, and space. Definitely play with scale too, I think. Um, yeah. It was a complete different idea. I think someone previously was talking about carving in, um, but here these little what what was your word for them? The um, whatever the little enclosures are, you know, maybe oh, some are made. Yeah, yeah, maybe some are made for two people. Maybe some are made for ten people. Yeah. Maybe some are made for a um, hundred people to all come together. And again, yeah. then that can feed into understanding of where it makes sense to have these things um but yeah to treat it as a language to to yeah. continue and again um not a I, I like that you're not set on a particular form but each is sort of a different level of enclosure um that would make sense in a particular case um yeah great really good thanks Jenny. <laughs>